let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. I, all I can say is this better be a practice of your life and it better start today if it hasn't already started earlier. Mm. That whatever we need, I mean, we need to not be hearing preachers and pastors talking about how many people they've healed or how many people they've saved or how many people they, 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 they. they. Because you want to know something at the end of the day? They didn't save anybody. No, they did not. Mm -mm. Only one person ever saved anybody, and that was Jesus Christ, and he saved you, and he saved me, and he saved Alice. It is the shed blood of Jesus Christ by which men are saved. Nobody else. Nothing else. Paul said, I don't even say I baptized anybody. Mm -hmm. You healed somebody? Now, you know what? You can be used by God. But the simple fact of the matter, he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's right. How can we go and boast about what we've done when we've done nothing other than surrendering to him to be used by him? We're just having the power of God working through us. We're just a conduit. I mean, you can you can you imagine the shock for somebody who is so confident in what they have done to, have to enter into that in life oh. and hear Jesus say, Depart from me, you evil ones. I never knew you. I'm going to tell you something. It's interesting because uh, I, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. People think that blessings of God come from faith. No, they don't. Watch out. Heresy. They come from obedience. That's right. By Abraham, by faith, it says, by faith, Abraham obeyed. Faith leads to obedience. Obedience leads to the blessings of God. Having said that, humility leads to obedience. That's right. A three-stranded cord is not easily broken. It's about faith, obedience, and humility. Mm -hmm. Because if you, don't ha if you lack one of those things, I'm going to tell you something, you're going to lack all three of those things. It's go read Philippians chapter two and see what it says about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See how it talks about his about his humility, how that led to his obedience. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death, death on, on a cross. cross. That was two eight. Philippians two, two chapter eight. eight. No, chapter two verse eight. You know what I said? What I say? Pay attention. Eight. Okay, <laughs> that's why you should be writing this down or checking me. All right, so. But that's, that's so true. I mean, it's humility. What's the opposite of humility? It's the pride that drives you to a place where you can stand in front of Jesus Christ and boast about what you've done. If you stop and think about it, a person that has, is full of pride, they don't want to obey. They just, they just no, want they to... No, they don't obey because yeah. they're in charge. Yeah, it's they, all they, about they, me. It's all about me. You know, six things it says in Proverbs chapter 6. Six things does the Lord hate, yea, even seven are an abomination. The first one is haughty eyes. That's pride. pride. That becomes the gateway to all the other sins. Paul, talking about these perilous last days in 2 Timothy chapter 3, said the first thing he says about these perilous last days is that men will be lovers of self. That becomes, that pride, lovers of self, becomes the gateway to all of those other failings. I'm telling you, pride, obedience, humility, faith, they are three things locked together that are the foundation of our right relationship with God. Amen. God the Father, through the atoning work of Jesus Christ, powered by the Holy Spirit. How's that? But otherwise, I'm telling you, that's not where you are now. That's where you better get soon. Because these are the perilous last days. And the last thing in the world that you want to hear, and it may not even be in this world, mm. is coming before Jesus Christ and you... And, Okay, you, you're not you're not going to go before Jesus and tell him what you've done. No, no, no. Because if you're doing anything, you, and your and your good works are as filthy rags. Well, that's why here in that verse it said, "He who does the will of my Father." That's it, right? He who does the will of my Father. The will of his Father, Jesus, was clearly defined only moments earlier in his teaching on this, when he said. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Whatever we do, it should honor, it should bring glory to Him. 
Praise, honor, and glory to Him. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. God will not share His glory with another. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We belong to you. God of Israel. God of Israel. We come to worship you. We love to praise your name. Yeshua is the Lord, Rock of Israel, Rock of Israel, King of all the earth, blessed be his name.